All right, we're going to talk about something extremely important in Photoshop, and that is color settings. What we're going to cover is where to find uh, the color settings. Then we're going to talk about RGB and CMYK settings. Then we're going to talk about color profile management, how to deal with the mismatches, how to set it up so when we open files in Photoshop, Photoshop will warn us if there is a mismatch in the color profile. And then we're going to talk about missing profiles, how to deal with files that have missing profiles. And we will end with a couple of conversion options. All right, so let's get started. The uh, color settings are found under Edit, Color Settings. Okay, so these are our color settings. By default, we have the North America General Purpose, all right? And then we have the working spaces have to deal with your color profile, okay? So the settings that you will have in your computer. And by default, Adobe Photoshop has selected sRGB IEC 61966-2.1. Okay, this is a generic um, color profile that was created for the average consumer by both HP and Microsoft, okay? And the reason why is because they wanted to have a generic color setting, right, for the masses. Something not too complicated, something simple, but what that tends to do is make the color profile a little bit on the simplistic side, okay? So your colors tend to be limited. Uh, you don't have a big variety of color choices, okay? If I would recommend um, two other options, one would be Adobe RGB 1998, okay? This one has a greater color range, okay? You will get more greens, more blues, more yellows, okay? The, the problematic colors, specifically the yellows, okay? Again, uh, better range on reds, better range on greens, and better range on blues than the um, standard setting that comes with Photoshop, right? And if Adobe RGB was a better choice than sRGB, the best color profile would be Prophoto RGB. Okay, this color profile has an extensive range in color. Okay, the color variations are incredible. They're off, off the charts, literally. Okay, and this was designed for people who deal with photographs and for printers um, that are fully dedicated to photographic reproductions, okay? So plotters and thermal printers that are high quality tend to go with this um, RGB setting, okay? But for our daily work, either Adobe RGB or sRGB are fine, okay? Now, for CMYK, this is where you would go if you're working with a specialized professional print shop, okay? And most of them, if not the great majority of them, have created their own color profiles based on their printing machines for color processing, mass production, high quality, glossy reproductions, posters, think of um, books. And what you do is you contact your print shop, right? And you ask them for their color profile. And then you would go to load and you would find that color profile and you would select it from right here, okay? Then we have gray and we have spot color. Leave those the way they are. There's not too much that we have to deal with. So that was the settings for RGB and CMYK that we have to be very aware of. Our next step is to talk about color profile management, which is right here. Now, color profile management, it, pretty much how it works is that imagine that all the different color profiles, okay, all these color profiles right here were different languages. And your computer has its own language, okay? So this would be uh, your working space right here, okay? Think of this as your language. Well, if you bring a file that has a different color profile, Photoshop will have different options as how to deal with those different color profiles 
or when you're pasting a color profile that is not the same color profile as your working space. And remember, your canvas is your working space. So if you select Ask when opening, what Photoshop will give you, they will give you a warning window telling you that the document that you're about to open has an embedded color profile that does not match your current RGB workspace. So Photoshop will tell you what the embedded color profile for the file is and what your working space is. And then it will give you an option. Would you like to use the embedded profile instead of your working space? Convert the document's color to the working space. Convert their profile to your profile. Or discard the embedded profile. You know, do not color management. That is completely up to you. But this is set up so that your color profile and let's say your client's color profile or a coworker's profile are the same. Okay, so what you do is you tell everybody, hey, we're working on RGB and we're using sRGB or we're using Adobe RGB 1998 or Pro Photo. Okay, and if you get a different color profile, Photoshop will allow you to either convert it to your working space, use their color profile, or ignore it altogether. Then we have Ask When Pasting. This is pretty much the same. If you open a file with a different color profile as your working space, Photoshop will ask you the three same questions when you copy and you paste into your working space. Okay, the next section we're going to talk about is the missing profile. And the missing profile is very important because a lot of files out there in the world are not color managed. A lot of people don't pay attention to these sections right here. And what happens is when they print and it looks completely different, okay, because they don't have really good color management. So if we select Ask when opening, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to open a file. Okay, here's one of my paintings. And in purpose, I got rid of the uh, color profile. So because I have set up for my missing color profile ask when opening, this is what I get, missing profile window. The document does not have an embedded RGB profile. What would you want to do? Okay, leave as is, assign the working profile, or assign a specific profile. So what I would do, I would leave as is, hit OK. So there's no color profile right here. And then I would go to edit and assign profile. It will tell you that changing the document profile can affect the appearance of layers. So I'm going to hit OK. And now what I can do, I can assign a specific profile right here. Let me move this to the side. And look what happens when I switch color profiles. All right, so you have to find the color profile that best matches what you first opened. Okay, so in this case, Apple RGB does match perfectly. I'm gonna hit okay. And this is how you assign a profile to an image that does not have a color profile. The last thing that I wanna cover for color settings is the conversion options. The conversion options are on the top right hand side of the color settings. And let's talk about the intent. We are using the Adobe Engine and we have four options. Perceptual, Saturation, Relative, Colometric, and Absolute Colometric. Relative, Colometric, Perceptual are the standards. Relative colometric is more accurate. However, because it has to be more accurate than the other ones, it tends to band the colors when it comes to gradation. What you can do, if you don't get a good print where the colors blend correctly, you can switch to perceptual and that will solve the problem. And this pretty much covers everything about color settings that we need to know at the moment.